Welcome to our margin of safety video. So the first two videos in the playlist uh, for chapter six, uh, CVP analysis. Uh, the first calculation was basically how many units do we have to produce to break even? So neither making money or losing money. The second calculation we did was, hey, how many units do we have to uh, produce or sell uh, to achieve a target net income? Uh, what we're gonna talk about in this video is something called the margin of safety. So effectively, I like to refer to the margin of safety as your wiggle room. It's the difference between your actual or expected sales and the sales at the break even point. So basically, if I were to take a look at my budget and it was to say that my projected sales for the year were gonna be $375,000, right? And then I calculated my break even point in sales and my break even point, right? The point at which I neither make nor lose money is $300,000. Well, my margin of safety is the difference between the break-even point, right, where I make no money, and what I'm expecting to earn. So in that example I just gave you, I'm expecting to sell $375,000 worth of product, and my break-even point is $300,000, so my margin of safety is $75,000. Basically, what is my wiggle room? How much can my sales drop before I am I'm in jeopardy of losing money or making no money? So we can express then this as either a dollar amount or as a ratio, and there's benefits to doing both. So the first formula is the formula for margin of safety in dollars. It's what I just mentioned. So you take your budgeted or your projected sales and you subtract your break-even sales, and that will give you your margin of safety in dollars, the amount that your projected sales can drop before you start to lose money. Okay. Um, the second way you can express it is in terms of a ratio. So what you do for the margin of safety ratio is you take that margin of safety in dollars that you just calculated and you just divide it by your budgeted or projected sales. And what that's going to give you is the percentage. And the reason that the per calculating the percentage can be good too is because it adds weighting, right? So for instance, if I gave you a situation and I said that the margin of safety in dollars was $175,000. And I said to you, is that good or is that bad? You would have no real way to answer that question. Like you could say, hey, at least there's a margin of safety. It's 175K, that's, that's good, but I don't know how good, right? Now, if you add a percentage on that and you calculate the margin of safety ratio, and then I tell you that the margin of safety in dollars is 175,000, and the margin of safety ratio is 47%, right? Now you can start to add weight and you can say, hey, wait, hold on, that's really good because sales can drop 47% from projections before I start to lose money. And the reason it's good for you to know this is pretend that you're a manager and you're, and you're watching your budgets and you're month over month and you're comparing actual to budget and you know that you've only got, let's pretend it's a margin of safety of $30,000 on the year and in the first quarter, you're already $20,000 under budget. Well, it's time to sound the panic alarm, right? Because you've used up two thirds of, the, of your wiggle room. So unless you turn the boat or unless you right the ship and turn things around, you're gonna have a year where you lose money. So that margin of safety gives us the ability to say, hey, are we on the right track beyond just comparing our actual to the budgeted amount. It lets us keep tabs on you know, whether or not we need to push that panic button. Okay, so those are the two formulas for, do, for calculating it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to that Vargo video example again, the one we've been using for the first two videos, and we're going to assume that the actual or the expected sales are gonna be $750,000. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare that $750,000 to what our break-even level was, right? And we're gonna decide what's our margin of safety. Now we'll go through the whole process assuming that, hey, this was a question given to us on the test, I'm starting from scratch. So let's pretend this is the information that's been given to us. We have a sales price, once again, of five, $500 per unit. We've got variable costs of $300 per unit. Our fixed costs are 200, and our projected sales are 700,000. Okay, what we want to determine is what is the margin of safety in dollars based on this given information right here, okay? So again, refer to that formula sheet that you've been provided. The margin of safety in dollars is total budgeted or actual sales minus the break even sales. So again, if it was me, I would write the formula out, total budgeted or projected sales minus the break even sales. So this is the formula. This is how I'm gonna answer the question. 
I'll start by filling in the information that I know. So I do know the projected sales, right? They told me that the projected sales were 700,000. So I'm going to take 700,000 and I'm going to subtract the break even sales. Now, unfortunately, up here, they didn't tell me what the break even sales dollars were. So I'm kind of stuck. I can't finish the calculation. So to answer that question, what I have to do is I have to calculate the break even sales. So what I do is I go back to my formula sheet. And I look for a formula that says, what is the break even point in sales? And it's right there. The break even point in sales dollars equals my fixed costs divided by my contribution margin ratio. Okay? So I need to answer, I need to complete this formula to solve my question. So going back to this Excel, I now need to take my fixed costs and divide by my contribution margin ratio. So first question, first piece of the puzzle is the fixed costs. Are they given to me? And the answer is yes, right there. Right? The fixed costs are $200,000. So I will take those and I will divide them by the contribution margin ratio. And again, I'm stuck. I don't have the contribution margin ratio. So I have to continuously go through this process. Now, once you've done this stuff, I've said it before, but once you've done this stuff a bunch of times, you'll be able to quickly do this stuff in your head, this math in your head. But if you're struggling at all, go slow. Go step by step, and you can back into any unknown piece of information. So the next thing I need is contribution margin ratio. Going to the formula sheet, you would see that the contribution margin ratio equals your contribution margin divided by your sales. Okay, so again, I need the contribution margin. It's not given to me. And I need to divide that by the sales. And they did give me the sales price, 500 bucks, right? So once again, I'm missing a piece of information. I go back to the formula sheet and I say, well, how do I get contribution margin, right, per unit? Well, that's quite simply sales minus variable costs. So 500 minus 300. So that means that my contribution margin per unit is two hundred dollars. Now that I have this piece of the puzzle, I just work my way backwards up all of these calculations, fill in the blanks, and finish the question. Okay? So now that I know my contribution margin per unit is two hundred dollars, I'm going to come back up here to the contribution margin ratio. And I needed to take my contribution margin of two hundred dollars and divide it by my sales of five hundred. So that gets me a contribution margin ratio of forty percent. And now that I have the rate, the contribution margin ratio, I can come back up to the break even in sales calculation, which is to simply take your fixed costs and divide it by that ratio, 40%. Right? And we're just continuously backfilling our formulas. So I now take 200,000, I divide it by 40%, and that shows me that my break even sales are $500,000. So that 500K, that represents the dollar value in sales that I need to sell to just break even. I'm neither going to make nor lose any money. So to get my margin of safety, my margin of safety is the difference between what I'm projecting to sell, which is 700,000, and what I need to sell to break even, which is 500,000. So my margin of safety in dollars is simply $200,000. Okay? Now again, we said that sometimes it's beneficial to, to um, express this in terms of a percentage as well, which means we may want to or we may be asked to calculate something called the margin of safety ratio, right? And that's just the margin of safety in dollars, which is what we just calculated, divided by the total budgeted or actual sales. So in our question, the margin of safety ratio Right, is equal to the um, margin of safety in dollars divided by, in this case, our projected sales. Right, and again, I've been doing this stuff a long time, and I still like to write out the formulas before I start the question, just because it keeps me focused on the numbers I'm supposed to use. So the margin of safety in dollars is what we just calculated. Back up here, we said our margin of safety in dollars was $200,000, right? I'm going to divide that by the projected sales, which we were told were $700,000, okay? So my margin of safety ratio is 200000 
divided by 700,000 or 28.6%. So that means that my sales can drop by almost 29% before I start to lose money. Okay? My sales can drop by $200,000 before I start to lose money. That's the value of the margin of safety. It gives us, again, an idea of what our wiggle room is. How much can our sales fall off or be off of what we're projecting uh, before we start to lose money? Okay, so that's the end of this video. Nice and short and sweet. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll have more to come on CVP analysis uh, soon. Cheers.